<clears throat> Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now on question number two from the February March 2020 International A Level um, paper from uh, Cambridge. This is the paper one, which is a pure mathematics P1 9709, paper one, variant two. And this question here is all about transformations of graphs. So it says the graph of y equals f of x is transformed by the graph or to the graph of y equals 1 plus f of a half of x. We're told to describe fully the two single transformations which have been combined to give the resulting transformation. We've got a combination of transformations that leads us from f of x to 1 plus f of a half of x. Now, first thing, when we have a combination of transformations, we normally deal with what's inside the function first and then what's outside the function. So all the changes that take place inside this bracket is what we deal with first. And then we deal with the changes that are outside of the bracket, like which are separate from the function. Okay, that's one thing, all right? Um, secondly, um, there's a few rules that I'm going to go through first before I actually answer this question, just to give you the background of this topic. Um, for those of you who maybe maybe don't have that. So if you start off with y equals f of x, and if you add something to the whole function, for example, if you do y equals f of x plus a constant, okay, plus a constant where a is a positive constant, right? Then what this leads to is a vertical trans translation. All the y coordinates you add a to them, and all the x coordinates stay the same. What changes that occur inside this bracket affect the x coordinate. Changes that, that occur outside the bracket, which are, you know, added to or multiplying the whole function, they affect the y coordinates. So here, the x coordinate remains unchanged. The y coordinate, you add a to it. You add a to it. So basically, what happens is the whole graph basically shifts up by a units so you can say this is a translation and you can give a vector to describe the translation it doesn't move horizontally but it moves vertically a units upwards positive a you can say positive a the same as that okay so that's a translation okay um which is vertical now let's continue sticking with things outside the function for example if i have a times f of x where i multiply the whole of this function by f of x again it's only the y coordinates that are affected the x coordinates remain the same and the y coordinates are multiplied by a so basically what this is this is called a vertical stretch vertical stretch and the the, the factor the stretch factor you can say is a of factor whatever it's multiplying the whole function which is a that's called a vertical stretch of factor A. These are things that are affecting the, like it's like the, uh, change, there's a change taking place, you can say, outside the function. Something can be multiplied, to, uh, the whole function is multiplied by something. The whole function, you're adding something to it. It's not inside the function, it's not inside this bracket that the A is, it's outside. So these are all causing vertical movements. Okay. And you also have, for example, you have Y equals minus F of X where basically the whole function the chain the sign of the whole function changes okay you just you know you just take the whole function and you change the sign of every term right now minus f of x that's again it's like you're multiplying the whole function by minus one so again this is going to be a vertical kind of change but what happens is the x coordinates stay the same and the y coordinates change their sign so if that happens, for example, you have a point here, if its x coordinate stays the same and its y coordinate changes its sign, it's going to basically reflect in the x-axis. So this would be a reflection in the x-axis. Reflection in the x-axis. Again, this is going to cause this vertical kind of change. All right, that's how the movement is going to be. All right, that's for, these are all vertical, these are all vertical transformations. These call vertical changes, okay? These cause vertical changes, and you can notice you're adding something to the whole function. You're multiplying the whole function by something, both of these cases, but this one is just minus one, basically. All right, now, 
When you have something like y equals f and this time x plus a, where it's inside the function, in this case, it's like the x is being replaced by x plus a. So again, it's a translation. However, the y coordinates this time are unchanged and the x coordinates are changed. Now, this is where it's a bit different than what you might think. Okay, this time it's a translation. The y coordinate remains the same, so this doesn't change. But the x coordinate, instead of it moving a units to the right, like you might think, it moves a units to the left. Okay, it moves a units to the left. All right. Just like, for example, if you had y equals x squared, and you have y equals, for example, x minus 2 squared, right? The x is replaced by x minus 2. This is like taking the original function f of x and replacing it by the x by x minus 2. Now, we know y equals x squared looks something like this. And y equals x minus 2 squared, well, we know that when, when um, uh, you know, y is 0, where does it cross the, 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 the x-axis? When y is 0, you have x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2 twice. Basically, what's going to happen is it's going to turn, if you, if, you, if you sketch it, it's going to turn at x equals 2. So it's like the whole of this function has moved two units to the right. It's like this has moved two units to the right. Okay, so this function has moved two units to the right, even though it says minus two. And if it was x plus two squared, if you solve that, you would have x plus two equals zero, x minus, x, x equals minus two. So yeah, x, if it was plus two, it would be x equals minus two. So the, it's like the function will move two units to the left. So you basically... Uh, when it's when it's inside the function, you do the opposite. It says plus here, plus a, you go to the left. If it said minus a, you go to the right. You do the opposite of what it says. So the changes inside the function kind of like, uh, first of all, they, they have like a effect which is horizontal. And secondly, they kind of like do the opposite. So for example, if you have y equals f times a of x, this is again a stretch, but this time it's a horizontal stretch because the x coordinates are changed. The y coordinates stay the same, so it's a horizontal stretch, okay? But in this case, the factor is going to be not a, it's going to be the reciprocal of a. It's going to be 1 over a. So, if, for example, if this is 3 over 2, x, you'd get horizontal stretch of factor 2 over 3. Whatever's over here, you just write, you, you, you multiply all the x coordinates by the reciprocal of that to show the transformation, okay? So that's when you're multiplying something with the x, where you're replacing the x in the function f of x with ax, then it's a horizontal stretch of factor 1 over a. So the x coordinates are multiplied not by a, but by, by its reciprocal. Okay, and if you have y equals f minus x like this, this, again, is going to cause a horizontal change. But in this case, the x coordinates are multiplied by, in this case, going to be minus 1. It's the same rule as this, but it's going to be multiplied by minus 1 over 1. Well, the reciprocal of minus 1 is minus 1. So the x coordinates change their signs, and the y coordinates remain the same. So if you have a point, for example, over here, its x coordinate will change the sign, so it will end up over there. The y coordinates will be the same. So it's like a reflection, this time in the y axis, causing a horizontal kind of change. So this is a reflection in the y axis. Okay, reflection in the y axis. So the x coordinates change their sign, the y coordinates stay the same. All right, so these are all representing horizontal changes. Okay, so that's a little summary here of transformations of functions and how these kind of changes and what they cause. All right, so these are vertical changes, these are horizontal changes. So let's apply that to this question where you have y equals f of x. Okay, and it becomes um, the new graph is y equals 1 plus f of, what was it? half x okay now the general rule is we start off with what's inside the function sometimes it doesn't make a difference but sometimes it does so the general rules you start off with what's inside the function okay so let's start off with f of half x and describe what that causes so f of a half x as we can see this is inside the function it's kind of this kind of situation here where we are multiplying the the x inside the function with a. You're replacing the x with a half x, you can say. So we know this is a horizontal stretch of factor 1 over a. Okay, so it's a horizontal stretch of the reciprocal of a half. So we can call this a horizontal stretch 
horizontal stretch. You can also say a stretch in the x direction. Okay, of factor two. Reciprocal of a half is two. So that's the first thing. And the second transformation that takes place is where you have to do one plus f of a half x. Okay, so we're now dealing with, with this part here. Okay, so this is basically you're adding one to the whole function. The whole function is being, you know, you're adding one to the whole thing. So this now becomes one of these vertical changes. So this is like a vertical change. All right, and it's this type of transformation where you're adding something to the whole function. So this is a translation and the vector zero A. So exactly what numbers being added to the whole thing, that's what you write down, it acts kind of normal. So this is a translation. We don't have to say vertical because the reason is we, when we give the vector that shows us it's vertical, you have zero, one. If you write a translation in the y direction of one units, Upwards, that's also fine. You can say, you know, translation parallel to the um, y-axis, okay, parallel to the y-axis of one unit upwards, you can write that. But this is like a very succinct way of writing the answer. Translation vector zero one, that is perfectly good and it's a very concise way of writing all that information. So here we have um, these, the answer basically. All of that explanation just to give you some background of the topic. But this is the answer. Very quick question. Actually, only worth four marks. So probably you get uh, one mark for the description of the transformation and one mark for the detail of what the factor is and what the how many units it goes up is. All right. So there we have the answer to that question. I hope that um, benefit those who maybe didn't understand this topic before. Um, so this is some background. So other questions that might come up. Hopefully, this will give you some. Um, understanding of how to deal with them as well general idea of this topic so yeah that concludes question number two from this february march 2020 paper p1 uh, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section over here other questions from the um, topic of transformations of graphs from p1 um, cambridge can be found in this playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the video that shows here will explain how to use my channel to find what you're looking for thank you for watching and see you soon